my dear brothers and sisters, all of us, each and every single one of us, we know someone who is a non-Muslim. Whether he be a neighbor, whether he be a colleague, whether he be a classmate, a co-worker, an employee, an employer, an acquaintance, a business partner, whatever it be, we do know someone. We cannot say that we don't know anyone. All of us, we do know people around us who are kuffar. Imagine for a second that on the day of judgment, these people come to us looking for us. Where were you? Why did you not convey the message of Islam to me? I am now doomed to the hellfire. And you didn't bother to share this message of Islam with me that would save me from the punishment that now awaits me. The reality is, my dear brothers and sisters, that many of us are passive with regards to a da'wah, not bothering to care about passing on the message of Islam. The reality is that we are passive because either we don't value this Islam, we don't care about it, it doesn't have any value in our hearts, because if it did, then you would want to share it. When you value something, you want to share it with others. Or it could be that we are not fully convinced that Islam is the truth. We're not fully convinced, and that's why we don't care about sharing it with others. We think they're living a lifestyle and following a religion that is suitable to them and me, I find Islam suitable to me. I don't truly believe that this is the truth. Or it could be that we are not fully convinced about what is to come in the Akhirah of reward and punishment. We're not fully convinced of the punishment of the hellfire. We hear the ayat, we hear the ahadith describing the punishment of the hellfire. but it doesn't really affect us. We don't fully believe in it because we can't see it. Because if we truly believed in it with full yaqeen and certainty, then we would not wish for a single person that we know or even don't know for them to suffer that painful punishment. My dear brothers and sisters, if none of that, then it means that we're selfish. If we truly value Islam and we believe in it, and we believe with certainty about the Akhirah, and we still don't bother to pass on this message of Islam to others, then it means we're selfish. All we care about is ourselves. And so it is like a fire that erupts in a building that you maintain or you know this building very well. And so you know where the exits are. And you know there's a fire raging through this building and you run for the exit door and you don't bother to guide others who are lost looking for the exit and they don't know how to escape. We have Islam and we live it. And we find comfort in it in this life and in the Akhirah. But we don't bother to pass it on to others. We don't want others to escape the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was not how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was. But rather, he had empathy and he cared for others. And that is why he would fall into grief when they would not accept Islam. 
my dear brothers and sisters, who are the heroes in a fire, in any kind of calamity, in any kind of catastrophe, in any kind of disaster? The heroes are those who don't just escape and save themselves, but rather the heroes are those who help others to escape and to be saved. And so the heroes on the Day of Judgment will be the prophets and the messengers for this reason. Because they saved humanity from the punishment that, uh, that awaited the people. Those who escaped, they escaped as a result of the invitation of the prophets and the messengers. And all those who follow in the footsteps of the prophets and the messengers. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised a great reward for those who call to Islam, for those who invite others to Islam. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Who is better in speech than those who call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do righteous good deeds and they say, we are from the believers, we are from the Muslims. Meaning there is no one better than them. Not just, who, not, not just those who do righteous deeds, but those who first and foremost, they call others to that. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لَإِنْ يَهْدِيَ اللَّهُ بِكَ رَجُلًا وَاحِدًا خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِنْ حُمُرِ النَّعَمْ He said to Ali رضي الله عنه, that if one person was to accept Islam through you, then it is far better than the most expensive of camels. Meaning that one person embracing Islam through you, the reward of that with Allah is far greater than all the luxuries of the dunya. And that's why the Prophet wasallam explaining this, how is it that this is such a huge reward for a person to embrace Islam through your hands? How is it that this is such a huge thing in the sight of Allah? The Prophet wasallam said, مَنْ دَعَى إِلَىٰ هُدًا مَنْ دَعَى إِلَىٰ هُدًا كَانَ لَهُ مِنَ الْأَجْرِ كَانَ لَهُ مِنَ الْأَجْرِ مِثْلَ أُجُورِ مَنْ تَبِعَهُ مثل أجور من تبعه لا ينقص ذلك من أجوره من أجورهم شيئا. That whoever calls to something good, whoever invites others to something good, a good deed, those who do it, he will get their reward. He will get their reward without their reward diminishing in the very least. A person who embraces Islam through you, whatever good deeds he now does, whatever salah he prays, whatever sadaqah he gives, whatever of good deeds he does, the reward is going back to you. And so the question is, my dear brothers and sisters, what legacy are we leaving behind in this dunya that will benefit us after we leave this dunya. And that's why the Prophet Sallallahu said in that same hadith, وَمَنْ دَعَى إِلَىٰ ضَلَالٍ كَانَ لَهُ مِنَ الْوِزْرِ مِثْلَ أَوْزَارِ الَّذِينَ تَبِعَهُ لَا يَنْقُصُ مِنْ أَوْزَارِهِمْ شَيْئًا Vice versa, whoever calls to an evil deed, a misguidance, those who follow him in that, he will share in their sin without, without their sins diminishing in the very least. What are we leaving behind in this dunya? Those who leave something good, it will continue with them after they pass on. And those who leave an evil legacy, and this is the difference here, not only will they be carrying that sin, but once they have gone on, once they have died, they won't be able to stop 
those sins from accumulating on them. Imagine that. It's one thing to leave this dunya with sins, going with you to your grave. But it's another thing to, to leave this dunya, carrying with you sins and those sins to continue to accumulate after your death until the day of judgment. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from among those. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from among those who call to good. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from among those who command the good and forbid the evil. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from among those who pass on the message of Islam to those around us.